Hey everybody, it's Greg the Ghoul here at our second location. That's right, we have a big reveal today because uh, the actual reveal of the name of the store uh, came out at KingCon 5. So um, I was handing out flyers with uh, the location and the date that we were opening and we had a 10% coupon on it as well, 10% off. So anyone that was walking around that uh, show this weekend, this past weekend, uh, got to hear the name of the new shop. So we're going to talk about that today, talk about King Kong 5, and we're going to get through some of those boxes of paperback books that we had. So there's lots of stuff to do today. Stay tuned. We've got lots of fun stuff going on. Uh, but let's first dive into our King Kong thoughts. <laughs> All right, well, let's just get right into it. Uh, top of the head, right from the dome, these are the thoughts on King Khan. I, it was a fun show. It was in a great, um, I, I don't know how long the buildings have been there, but the hotels were very nice. It's like a hotel complex, like that sort of place where there's outlets, there's stores, there's a business complex, there's hotels. So it's, it's you, you weave your way back there and you can find this hotel. Uh, much like the anime show we did in December, it was in the same area. Um, you have to find your way back there. Um, the hall itself that they had the show in was huge. It was fantastic. There's a ton of room, so I hope it stays the same way uh, like that for next year. Uh, one of the big issues when you set up at a show is that you, you're always fighting for space. You know, you're told you have an eight-foot table, but how much room do you have behind you? Uh, because behind you is your wall. So let me just flip this around real quick. So here's the two six-foot tables we have. I call this my convention stock. This might be... So this will always be on display at the new store. So if you're ever looking for any uh, stuff that we have at shows, it'll come back and live on these two six-foot tables. And I'll consistently um, restock it. And when we go to a show, these two tables will be empty. And maybe I'll bring out more dollar bins or something. Whatever we do. That's my plan for this space. But let's keep talking about King Con. So we had two six-foot tables there. Normally, there's a wall behind you, and sometimes you're in places that's cramped. You can't put the wall up, or you can't lean it on, the, on, on a wall behind you. A lot of times, you don't have a wall behind you to lean your, and I'm saying wall. I'm referring to that comic wall, like all the fancy books that you see behind people, like in this photo. Okay, now we all have the idea. I was quite the character. I mean, I mean, this is me. This is me at the show. I hope I was memorable. I was handing out my flyers for the new shop. I was trying to pitch the, the new store to people, and I had my tinted glasses on. You know, I was fresh uh, shave, so I hope I was memorable. But anyway, let's switch it around so you got to see me and my wall at the show. So the, the moral, so the end of that bit of the story is that you just never know how much space you're going to have when you get there. And I didn't even have a wall to lean my wall on. So I was in the middle of an aisle and there was still ample amount of space, which is fantastic. So a huge ballroom, lots of, um, you know, nobody was bumping into each other, which it does happen at shows sometimes. Um, and that is not indicative of whether it was a busy show or not busy show. I think it's more about whether or not the room was big enough and if they spaced everybody out properly. And I really think they did. It was very well laid out. There was a second room with a few vendors in it. I heard it wasn't as well uh, trafficked, but that always happens. I mean, there is, without fail, you never want to be in the second room. I mean, there's a bit of... You know, there's a, a bit of stuff that I've learned over the years of doing conventions. No, you wait to the main ballroom if it's a small show like this. Um, Monster Mania has many different rooms. It's a massive convention. It takes over the ground floor of um, a, a hotel in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And it's okay if you're in different rooms. But there are some shows that are really small. Uh, maybe one ballroom at the Marriott or it's a, you know, a smaller room at a Hilton and there's a side room for vendors. Never want to be in that side room because I got to tell you, people make a lap around the main ballroom and they're out. So just keep that in mind as young vendors or anyone signing up for shows. If you hear about the second room, avoid it and ask to be put on the wait list for the main ballroom. And if you don't get in, you don't get in. There's always next year because trust me, you're going to miss out on some money if you go into that second room. Words of wisdom. Let's get back to this uh, table here. 
So I had tons of boxes, freshly priced with stuff, other stuff we didn't have to price too much. But um, I had brought a lot of modern stuff. I brought a lot of popular stuff online, like a lot of the stuff that you see people talking about um, in the, the hot, uh, hot lists or top 10 lists. Um, you know, we had stuff that was like fresh off the hot lists. Um, and I understand people want to find this stuff in the dollar bin or something so they don't pick it up here where is it did i even i thought i left it in here maybe it's not uh the universe x book was here uh that everyone's freaking out about we had um lots of dave stevens nobody wanted to pick that up because i guess they already had it all um we have a almost a full short box of Deadpool here with tons of variants, signed books, not a one Deadpool book sold. The trickiest thing to figure out uh, is some people only do shows, then they can kind of get a feel for those shows. But each convention is its own market and it's attracting its own set of people. So you need to get in there and figure out what those people want. I would say that this show, King Con, wanted mostly gold silver and bronze and if you didn't bring that and if you didn't have and it wasn't even wall books they were looking for a lot of fillers um nothing nothing modern that i had sold walking dead half a short box of walking dead nothing wasn't even looked at no wolverine books i sold some she hulk that was popular for one or two guys you know um and was it because i had the she hulk listing out there's t lots of stuff in the S section that I don't separate that you would find interesting, but it makes me wonder. I probably do need to separate these more. Um, like I said, the Deadpool box, not a person looked at it. Um, nothing that I thought would sell like Amazing Spider-Man. We sell tons of Amazing Spider-Man in the store in New Hope. Not so much, not one Amazing Spider-Man that I had sold. Of course, I don't have anything below 50 or, or you know, so that might have been it. Um, so I don't know. What did sell? Oh my. So what did sell was all a lot of underground comics, a lot of weird stuff that we brought. Um, I had brought an adult box of comic books, uh, just stuff with some scandalous covers and nudity involved. So that had a lid on it the entire show with adults only written on top of it. Um, those were the books that sold. Uh, I didn't separate them, but Faust. I had a customer that came by for Faust in the F section. Absolutely deplorable content, It's and I love it. And it's it's what sold at that show. Uh, why? <laughs> because, this, you know, the show attracted, I think, an older clientele looking for gold, silver, and Bronze Age comic books. And not even so much Bronze Age, I would say. They... They just really wanted like silver runs of silver and uh, and gold, but and what else do uh, older gentlemen want other than that is uh, some sleaze. As I was like to, first of all, I love just saying the word sleaze, but uh, yeah, that's all they wanted. That's what we had, and uh, if I'm the sleaze peddler, here I am putting out <laughs> peddling the underground comics and um, all the adult books. But that's what I had. So thank goodness I brought them because it probably made up at least, you know, half of my sales. I couldn't even imagine, you know, if I didn't bring them, the show would have been a, a real wash. But and um, so that's King Con. I mean, I don't know how well all the um, the feral number one variants did. I don't know if they were giving those away or selling them. Uh, I was not part of the uh, artist alley that they had going on. I'm sure that attracted a lot of fans. I didn't witness it, you know what I mean? But And I'm not sure what their numbers are through the door. I'm sure they got lots of people through the door. Um, my biggest thing about this show was to promote the opening of this store. So we had printed up some special flyers. So my closing statements on King Con. We'll be back for King Con 6. I'll be keeping in mind what sold this year and trying to bring that back for next year and also bring back um, maybe some more silver and, and uh, 
gold. I don't normally have golden age stuff anyway, but silver and bronze specifically. I'll leave the Deadpool box at home. I'll leave the Walking Dead box at home for King Con. Um, and of course, at King Con 6, everyone will ask me for K Deadpool and Walking Dead, which is how it always goes. But uh, that's closing thoughts on King Con. Definitely seek out uh, the show next year. It's very well organized. The people that run it were very nice, um, very friendly. They had an amazing, like, uh, you know, camera crew running around filming stuff the entire time. So it's very social online. It's a very social, um, and and uh, that's what I thought it would have. That sort of online crowd that came looking for the variants, looking for hard to find uh, top ten list books, which is what I brought. And nobody wanted to see any of that stuff. That's the sort of stuff I put on the wall, as you can see in that former photo, and lots of weird stuff. The one comment I did get over and over again, which I think was a positive comment, was that how unique my wall was. I had one of the most unique walls in the room, or one of the weirdest. People said that too, which I do appreciate. That's, uh, I mean, I built the wall. It's curated by me. Every wall behind the comic shop person is curated by them. They decide what to put on that wall whether it's all the hot books that are selling or whether it's all the weird stuff I want to put behind me because that's what I like. I mean, I had Fangoria number one on the wall. Um, we had uh, we had an Obama Spider-Man book. We also had the Trump uh, Steals Christmas book. We have, um, uh, you know, underground books over here and um, all sorts of weirdness. It was a fantastic wall. I actually really liked it. Um, but that's it. That's all my King Con stuff. Definitely seek them out next year. And you'll catch us there. Stay tuned. Here comes the big name announcement for the store. All right. Well, here we go, everybody. This is the huge announcement for the name. So you guys can start seeking the uh, Instagram account out uh, after this video if you want. There is a live Instagram account associated with this, with this store with one logo image up right now, which looks like this. So there you have it. There's Newcomb Comics and Collectibles, 54 Mount Airy Village Road, Lamberville, New Jersey. This was the coupon we're handing out at King Con. And if you stop into Phantasm, you can pick up one of these coupons. 10% off. Uh, we'll honor it when you bring it in. We just take it away after that. But the grand opening is May 11th, 2024, 11 a.m., thousands of comic books. I mean, I keep telling everybody it's thousands of comic books. No, really? I'm like, no, really. It's thousands of comic books, all for a dollar a piece. Um, so I was handing this out, really working it. Hopefully I was pretty memorable. Here's some Tashmon uh, artwork here. We had a, I wanted a mutant. I wanted some goop. That was definitely a descriptive word. Um, mutations. Something super cool. So I knew... I really love this name for a store early on, like years ago, I was going to call our old warehouse store Newcomb Comics, and I just love the way it rolled off my tongue. Uh, so I would not have named the store Newcomb Comics because it is a reference, um, much like Phantasm, is a reference to my two favorite movies, Phantasm and the horror movie, and uh, Mask of the Phantasm, which was definitely an influence upon my earlier self uh to continue on with comic books and my it, it fostered my love for comic books so i think they're both two important movies uh phantasm of course fostering my love for horror uh and it worked out perfect for that name but um this one nukem comics and collectibles i would not have done if i wasn't able to get uh lloyd kaufman's permission to name my shop nukem comics um i personally worked on return to nukem uh, to, uh, Return to the Class of Newcomb High, which was a movie I did a long time ago. I worked on the uh, out on location with all of them, became very close with a bunch of the people that worked at Troma, uh, especially Lloyd Kaufman, who we both stayed friends for quite some time now. It's been um, just really nice uh, to be able to catch up with Lloyd at conventions and stuff like that. But I reached out to him and he said, you know, all the best. Uh, wishes and good luck and said of course so um, from that point forward we just started reaching out to some graphic art some artists um, we have two shirts coming with a third um, what would we call it a, like a variant sort of shirt uh, special edition 
limited print on that one. So there will be t-shirts available. Um, and we can also show off Henri, who has done tons of artwork for us at Phantasm Comics. Henri has uh, created a fantastic image for a t-shirt that will be available uh, for sale here at Nukem Comics. There we go. We keep saying it, so hopefully it burrows in. But um, And of course, I mean, the movie, you know, Class of Nukem High is a fantastic trauma flick it's uh, disgusting it's funny it's uh, it's so over the top so if you haven't seen that movie yet check it out and then go and watch return to the class of nukem high which is also a trip but that's it that's the name nukem comics and collectibles n-e-c-c -C. and um, that's that so it was a it was tough keeping it uh, under wraps but now you guys all know the location and the name and everything's coming along so may 11th we should be open we should be um ready to go we'll have priced comics we're going to have tons of the dollar bins and one of the biggest things i was getting some feedback at the show was for magazines uh which i was already planning on putting in the store but now i'm even like i'm bolstered i'm like i'm even more um sold on putting the magazines here because so many people were asking for magazines which i didn't bring to king con but people wanted creepies they wanted eeries they wanted vampirella they wanted more early Fangorias. They wanted, um, uh, what was the other book? Uh, Gore Zones. They wanted all that stuff that's just sitting in storage that nobody buys in New Hope. So that'll all be available here, along with everything else that you see in the background. So uh, that is the shop update. Nukem Comics. So stop by Phantasm in New Hope anytime between now and um, our opening day. And you can pick up one of these coupons and bring it in. And then you can get 10% off your purchase. So, you know, get some free comics in some way or whatever. We'll figure it out. And um, it should be so cool. I'm so excited. You know, we'll have this. It's out there. It's real. It's happening. Nukem Comics um, is coming to Lamberville. I'm becoming my own biggest competition. So the one thing is that we won't have new books here. Weekly books will stick uh, to Phantasm Comics. If anything, they'll just appear here, maybe in bundles or just priced up. If they um, if they hit the secondary market, we'll put them into the bins. So, all right. Well, that's that on the um, the new shop. We're moving along. I mean, this this is like I made the final list of things to do before we have to open in basically a month from now. It's a page long. And there's none of the things are checked off yet because I just made it yesterday. But we're working towards that. We're working towards getting all those things checked off. So, um, And it should be ready by the time we open. At least the store will be ready. I'm not sure about the back room being fully set up and all that other stuff. But um, no matter what, May 11th, I'm opening the doors and just flood in. So we had really, really, really good feedback from a lot of people at King Con. So I don't know. It might be a big opening. I'm not sure if they all do come it could be big so plan ahead uh doors open at 11 okay let's move on let's actually let's reveal some of those paperbacks that we had in the uh from that collection part two of the many boxes of paperbacks finally coming out all right well let's continue on in our series of uh never-ending boxes of books this particular box has um a lot of digests and a lot of different stuff at the bottom, it looks like. So, um, Amazing Fact and Science Fiction Stories. This is a um, complete Murray Linsner novel in there. That's pretty cool. I started like putting these in just bags and putting them up around the store. Just kind of like, uh, this is a different, this is Night Cry. This is a horror thriller sort of digest. <clears throat> Here's uh, the Magazine of Fantasy and Science Fiction wraparound cover on this one so I started putting these in bags and kind of like just thumbtacking them around the store and they sold I haven't sold these in a while I have lots of these they're not too uncommon they're tougher to find in like a, a better condition but then these are actually really nice these are all you know uh, 1963 1964 fantasy and science fiction uh, books 
What do we got? 1963, all from that same era. You're talking about people like L. Sprague de Camp, Frank Pohl, Fritz Lieber. That's just in this one book or digest. Uh, Richard Matheson, James White, all sorts of great classic writers. Harry Harrison, either a um, serialized story, a short story, or a full-length novel, a novelette. That's what was in these digests. You know, perfect train reading material. You know, back in the day when you were commuting to work pick this up at the stand and have something to read on the way home so that's you know maybe that'll maybe that'll come back maybe once cars can start driving themselves everybody will start picking up books again and they won't have to worry about that damon knight um here's a looks like a christmas one there you go a little christmas cover there um edgar pangborn richard matheson again avram davis so just these will be available uh, probably here. I'll put them out eventually at this at the new location. So um, you can pick some of these up. But I will also be thumb tacking these to the wall in Phantasm. So if you like the artwork, which was always, you know, really nice on the on the covers here. This one's ridiculous. So uh, these should be available there. But there was, I think, a box or two like this. Not too many. Mostly. Um, sci-fi and fantasy stuff so we have book turning points uh, essays on the art of science fiction edited by Damon Knight with tons of fantastic um, contributors C.S. Lewis um, we have Arthur C. Clarke John W. Campbell, James Blish uh, Isaac Asimov, Paul Anderson and the list goes on and on they're all in the front there fantastic stuff what do we got here? The Charm Adam Niswander. This feels like very nice. This is a Integra Press. I have no idea what Integra Press is. Never heard of them. Excerpts from what people are saying about the charm. I predict Adam will be the Tony Hillerman of horror. Now, only if I knew who Tony Hillerman was would I get that reference. I guess I'm not very literary. We have the Chameleon Corps and other Shape Changers, 11 science fiction and fantasy tales from a secret agent who can metamorphose at will to an alien pet who comes courting his mistress. So, very cool. Probably a book club edition, I'd imagine. Maybe not. Doesn't say it is, but that's cool. Yeah, a lot of hardcovers in this box, it looks like. Here's a Once Upon an Apocalypse, 23 Twisted Fairy Tales. A lot of and like I said, there was a lot of the modern stuff, especially like the um, Lovecraft redos. And this is a really cool book. I picked this up probably last year. And I paid $25, $30 for this one. So that's really cool to have it back available for sale now. Uh, the Book of the Dead, 13 Classic Tales of the Supernatural, edited by Alan K. Russell. So and I think there's no artwork. What do we got? Monsters, Monster Festival. This is a fantastic cover. Edward Gorey, uh, Dust Jacket, edited by Eric Porter. And you get all this great Edward Gorey sort of side stuff here. Um, oh, and throughout, just, yeah, fantastic. Let me pull this one up. I just saw it. Where are you? Come on. You get little pieces like this throughout so super cool edward gory and um eric oh eric prodder monster festival sorry here's another one that i see a bunch um definitely say would recommend picking this one up cutting edge um new horror stories by peter straub whitley Stryber, clive barker so if you're a horror person you see this in paperback or hardcover pick it up it's a good read and um, I've just I've seen it around for a while. It's classic. Weird Vampire Tales: Thirty Blood Chilling Stories from the Weird Fiction Pulps. So this is pulling from probably Weird Tales, and and others. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's see here. Weird Tales. Yeah. So it's all stories pulled from the uh, pulp magazine Weird Tales, um, reprinted with permission. Uh, let's see. Okay, we have uh, J.O.B. 
Robert Heinlein, Comedy of Justice, Job. Oh, not J-O-B. It's just Job, a comedy of... Job, a comedy of romance. There we go. First print. Cool. Oh, this one is Superwoman. Hester, uh, Hester Pussycat Kill. Kill. The, um... This is 15 Whip Leather Hot Sexy Tales from the Lovecraftian Mythos. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, wonderful. Bondage and Lovecraft. I mean, that's what it's all about. So, you gotta have your, your Domination, uh, Howard, and the Dominatrix. There we go. Um, Horror Beyond 2, Stories of Strange Creations. This is a um, ESP publisher. Never heard of them either. Uh, this is the Fairy Reel, Tales from the Twilight Realm. That seems cool. Edited by uh, Ellen Datlow. So another, another one of the, from the fantasy series of books that we saw earlier. And then here's Snow White, uh, Snow White Blood Red. Uh, edited by Ellen Datlow and Terry Windling. And I believe I did want this book. Um... Let's see. Once upon a time, fairy tales were for children, but no longer. Uh, this is like twisted fairy tales, and I really think I wanted to buy this book a while ago. Did I already buy it? I'm not sure. Do I own this? If I don't, I do now, because I don't think I'm going to sell it. If I have a second copy, I will. All right, hold on. we got to get another box. This one's empty. All right. Yeah, so with the... Um, with the toys taking over the paperback shelves that we built here at the new location, I'm not sure what the fate of the paperbacks will be. Um, I'm sure we'll find some sort of space for them somewhere at the moment. I just don't know. Here is a treasury of fantasy. Look at that one. Fantastic. Huge heroic adventures in imaginary lands, novels and stories by William Morris, Lord Dunzany, George MacDonald, H.P. Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, Ursula K. Le Guin, and more. Wow, that's a great book. Uh, we have Terror by Gaslight. I think there's a bunch of these Hugh Lamb edited buys, which I might have said in the last video. And here's another one. More Victorian tales of horror. Of terror. Okay, what do we got here? Um... So this is a stack of, like I was saying earlier in the last video, the Ballantine Books series of, of fantasy and stuff like that. Look at this. Ah, there it is. Can you see it? It's all going up my nose. So every now and then like, I'll get like an old book. Look at that. I do that. It's a dust off, you know? Do that to your books. Dustiest part is up here. Dust them off. Okay, keep them clean. That's the Ballantine book series there, the one with the unicorn in the upper left-hand side of the book. These ones usually have a bit of value, especially when they're in higher grade. All right, what do we got here? Oh, interesting. Secrets of Doc Savage. That's pretty cool. I'm not sure what this is all about. Some sort of a uh, fanzine, perhaps. Um, Will Murray from 1981, Secrets of Doc Savage, is published by Odyssey Publication. Uh, this is the third in the Odyssey Publication series of booklets on the greatest of Pulp Heroes, Doc Savage. This series did not begin as a series. The first one, Doc Savage Reflections in Bronze, was published in commemoration of PulpCon 7, held in July 1978 in St. Louis, Missouri. So there you go. Um, probably a pretty tough find. Tough find. Um, Will Murray. Interesting. Raymond Feist. Feast? Raymond Fe Feist. Fairy Tale. I don't know how to say his last name. Leave it in the chat if you know. I've always enjoyed his books and never heard someone actually say his name. But not a book club edition. I believe this is uh, probably a first print of Fairy Tale. Um, here's another edition of The Devil's Dictionary. We were talking about this one in the last video. Ambrose Bierce and... Um, yeah, this, I, does this have yeah, some great artwork in here? Uh, art drawings by J.C. Suarez. Okay, there you go. Do have this, The Height of the Scream. I have a copy of this, so it'll be available eventually. Uh, Ramsey Campbell at Arkham House. Totally cool. 
Uh, we have the Great Mischief. Not sure about that, but the engaging new novel by the brilliant author of Three O'Clock Diner tells the story of a lonely bachelor and his secret passion for darkness. All right. Burnt Offerings. This is a cool one. Robert Morasco. Mar Book Club Edition. Some Love that artwork on the cover there. A little photo of him on the back. What else do we got here? Explorers of the Infinite, Shapers of Science Fiction, a Sam Mouskowitz, uh, by Sam Mouskowitz. So, widely recognized as the leading authority on the history of science fiction. So, can't go wrong with that. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, T.H. White's The Once and Future King, real retro edition. This is the book club edition from, let's see what the year was. Uh, let's see 1958 this is the book club edition from 1958 so whether or not you're you know investing in uh, books for you know the value I would still look these up these book club editions are fairly old that we got in this collection so who knows uh, this is the Silmarillion Tolkien's book Another, is this a book club edition? Or is, I don't think it is. Nope. This is not. So, second printing. First American edition, which is kind of cool. That's what makes it the second um, printing. We have Peter Straub, Floating Dragon. Uh, let's see, book club edition, very cool. Uh, okay, what's this one? Realms of Darkness, Nightmarish Tales of Supernatural and the Macabre, featuring uh, an introduction by Christopher Lee, and they put him on the cover, so why not? I mean, when you have someone like Christopher Lee writing your introduction, put him on the cover. Reborn by uh, F. Paul Wilson. And Methods of Madness by Ray Garten. This is a Dark Harvest book. And this is a Dark Harvest book. So uh, two, I guess, indie publishers. Pretty tough to come by these books. I would say I have a few of them. Um, similar to like Screen Press and stuff like that. They're just tough to find. Steven Sprudel. Rulers of Darkness. Yeah. Rulers of Darkness. Here's one, Daphne de Mary, Echoes from the Macabre, a Nelson Doubleday. There we go, nothing on the back, pretty plain. Okay, let's see, Castle View, a novel by Gene Wolfe. There we go. All nice hardcovers. The condition on these are fantastic, you know, that's the thing. Um, nothing's like a busted spine or like pulled apart. Not too many tears or anything on these collections either. Magica, Clive Barker. Possibly a first print. We can look at that later. Oh, and another Barker. Everville by Barker. Another huge Barker release. All right, one more book for this round because it's already been a long video. So stay tuned. Okay. Uh, so there's no lid on this one, so it looks like uh, some pol some digests again. Uh, but this was the big one sitting on top. Again, there's some, as I'll call, delamination happening here. But this is a fantastic book. M much like uh, Cutting Edge from earlier, this is a epic tome of horror. You want to? I, I find this book in varying conditions at used bookstores quite often. If you see it, it's usually. Um, it usually has like a big old flame cover, like some sort of fire, if I'm remembering correctly, is on the front of the cover, black background, hardcover book too. I've actually never seen the soft cover version of this book, so super cool to find that. Um, I have a very nice edition of this book for myself, one of those fancy limited editions signed by every author sort of book. Um, but this has the who's who of horror, and especially from the time. I mean, Shirley Jackson, Ray Bradbury, Clive Barker, Stephen King, and many, many more are contained in this book. So seek this one out if you're looking for horror reads. It'll be available here if you need it. And yeah, another box of digests. So 
I don't know if we have to go through all these. I'll look and see if there's anything, you know, crazy notable. I mean, this is kind of cool artwork. I like this. You can see that. And it is a wraparound cover with some other demons or whatever they are. I might have to look into that one myself. But, yeah, the digests, I mean, they're super cool. This is iconic artwork on that one there. Um, I just, I don't see much movement of, on them, especially even at, like, pulp shows. I mean, they're not pulp books. They're digests, so... They're, they're, I guess more of them are available and they're on better paper stock so they're not falling apart which also you know creates a rarity for the pulps of the of the 30s and 40s so these ones have lasted I mean some of these are in really nice condition so that also makes a difference um, that's why everyone's like well why are the ones from the 50s and 60s more expensive in the comic book world I'm like because they are tougher to keep in better condition mysterious island by jules verne just showing off some of the stuff that we had um the joy wagon by arthur arthur hadley i never heard of that one sean time trap by sean dalton seems pretty cool here's a david drake north world if you ever wanted to read about tanks fighting each other maybe this is the book for you maybe it's not i have no idea what that's about lord of light another zlozny what do we have here Bumper Crop, Joe R. Lansdale uh, from Golden Griffin Press. I have no idea what that is either, but pretty cool. Okay, Dark, Tender, Gruesome, Evocative, Funny, Sometimes All in the Same Story. So there you go. Maybe there's more than one story in there. Uh, let's see, more digests. Um, here's the Sundering Flood, another one of these Ballantine releases. These are great books. All of them are in good condition. No broken spines. Maybe some light foxing and, of course, some dust. But we'll figure that out. Here's Wonder Stories, the best of science fiction's great, uh, greatest. Ray Bradbury, Arthur C. Clarke, John D. McDonald, Frederick Brown, Kurt Vonnegut Jr., um, and many more. All contained in this one here. So this is still, I would consider this... Um, a digest but right on the edge this is like a transition period 1950 late 40s early 50s the transition period between digests to from pulps to digests um, and the last few books in this one CJ Henderson's what you pray for well I pray for two copies there you go two copies of CJ Henderson's what you pray for neither are signed why do you need two? Why do you need two? All right, well, that's that. A lot of fun stuff in these boxes. 1960, yeah. So it looks like it was the 60s era of um, fantasy and science fiction in these bins. Here's another venture science fiction. This lady's upset. She is upset. That It's the fists, all the anger. It's in the eyebrows and her fists. It's, just, it's really conveying. A scene. All right, well, more to come next video, so stay tuned, everybody. All right, everybody, well, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I have a feeling it might have been a longer one. Hopefully next video. I'm thinking within a week or two uh, when the next video comes out. There might be a nice big Nukem Comics and collectible sign right up here. That's right, so you'll be able to see it from this highway that passes by us. There's a great big highway down here. And we also have Antonio's Pizzeria right down the way. So if you're coming out here for comics, think about pizza as well. Comics and pizza. So get, a, get a soda from over there. Take a break at, during lunchtime. And then you can come back and start picking through our bins again. And uh, yeah, eventually you'll see a huge Nukem Comics and Collectibles sign above. But thanks a lot for watching this one, guys. And I'll catch you at the comic shop. Have a good one. Bye.